Chicago, Illinois. In the early 1980s, it is one of the deadliest major cities in America. Powerful drug gangs have transformed the South Side from a neighborhood into a war zone. To combat the rising tide of violence, the FBI forms the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. In Chicago, their prime target is a vicious gang known as the El Rukans. John Podliska is an assistant U.S. attorney in Chicago. The business of the El Rukans was to traffic in narcotics, cocaine and, and heroin and to control of a vast area on the south side of Chicago for purposes of selling and distributing those narcotics. They would exact tribute from other people who would uh, want to sell in that area. And they had a reputation and a well-deserved reputation for being one of, if not the most successful and the most violent uh, criminal drug dealing organizations in the Chicago area. In the spring of 1985, Several members split from the gang. They try to move in on El Rugen territory. Revenge is swift and deadly. Chicago's south side is gripped by a vicious turf war. As the murder rate climbs, the FBI seems powerless to stop the violence. Then, in May, an informant gives agents a tip. Several members of the El Rukan gang have left Chicago. They are hiding out in a house in Cleveland. Many of them are wanted for murder. FBI agents and Cleveland police raid the house and arrest several suspects. One of them is a man named Anthony Sumner. Sumner is a former El Rukan general, which makes him potentially useful. If investigators can turn him, they can get intelligence on the secret of El Rukans. Detectives question Sumner for hours. He implicates himself in a double homicide in Chicago and is facing serious time. Authorities offer to reduce charges, but only if Sumner tells them everything he knows about the El Rukans. Finally, the former El Rukan general agrees to cooperate. As Sumner talks to authorities, a terrifying picture emerges. The El Rukan gang has hundreds of members. They're heavily armed, they're well organized, and they're growing. The entire organization is run by Jeff Fort, a kingpin known for his efficiency and his brutality. He was at the top controlling the entire organization, directly below him were 21 generals, and he preserved his power that way. If anyone tried to seize power from him, from amongst those 21 generals, there were 20 other people who would be in a position to let him know that, and he could retaliate. Authorities thought they had taken Ford out of commission. In 1983, he was convicted of cocaine trafficking and sentenced to 13 years in a Texas prison. According to Sumner, Jeff Fort continues to run the El Rukans. He uses the prison pay phones to contact his gang in Chicago. Sumner's statement is a major break in the El Rukan case, according to Assistant U.S. Attorney Patrick Deedy. He was the first person to actually confirm what uh, the authorities had thought for a long time, which was that Jeff Fort, who was currently in penitentiary in Texas, was regularly talking on the telephone to members of the El Rukans in Chicago and coordinating or directing activities of the organization. 
The Arukans run their operation out of a converted movie theater on the south side of Chicago. It had been fortified by the Elrukans and was essentially a, a, a fortified fortress. He had people at the headquarters of the Elrukans who were required to sit by that phone 24 hours a day. There was always someone at the phone so that when he called, he could give his instructions, directions, and orders as to what he wanted done with his organization. For the task force, Jeff Fort's telephone conversations are an opportunity to learn more about the organization. Yes, Imam. No one questioned what he said and what he wanted done. There was absolutely no uh, debate, discussion, objection to anything that he was saying. And so the FBI, over the summer 1985, began to develop evidence uh, to provide a sufficient probable cause to go and to begin to listen to the, these conversations. Agents activated 24-hour wiretap to record the Kingpin's phone calls. 